Ugo Lloris is good. I don't think that's breaking any news today here on LAFC Plus, but it is the truth. LAFC get a nil-nil draw at home. Not the greatest result. Ugo Lloris was a massive part of that. He was the difference in this match for me, and he keeps the clean sheet his first for LAFC, and it was a big one, Mario. That LAFC yeah. and Sporting Kansas City both had chances. To me, this game, if this game is played in September, it might have been 4-3. Yeah, that, six, that makes sense. Six big saves from uh, Hugo on the night, earning him man of the match on that one. I mean, the 37-year-old still showing his athletic abilities, Dave, having to jump up to save what, a shot from Johnny Russell up on the top shelf. Yep. And then he took a shot off the chest from actually from the goal post on one of the saves when he was blocking uh, Memo Rodriguez. And then he saved the goal from uh, from uh, Pulido, one on, it was yeah. 1v1, and he got to that one. It was a well-deserved clean sheet for, for Hugo on that one, for sure. Well, when you said the 37-year-old was making big saves, I thought you were talking about Tim Milia at first, too. He had five big saves for the yes. 37-year-old for Sporting Kansas City. Eduardo Tuesta breaking in. Uh, things could have changed all the way around. I think it could have been 4-3 if these keepers didn't play well. Or maybe if the finishing was... You know, picking out a corner a little bit better, you know, or you know, maybe some of the the plays that building up to chances or half chances would have been a little crisper later in the year. Who knows this game? But in any event, it could have been four three on the night if these keepers didn't play that well. Also, so I think it was a pretty fair result. I don't like it when you're at home, you can't drop points. I know you're playing. I don't care who you're playing if you're LAFC. So it's not a good result, but it was a fair result in my estimation. And I think it was a good match, you know, for a neutral nil, nil. Sometimes those are lame. No question. <laughs> you know, this was not yeah. a lame, this was not a lame game, even for a neutral though. You know, yeah, the chances said, were there for sure. Yeah, just absolutely. the finishing was just not there. And I got one quick message to Denis. I'm sure he knows this already. I'm <laughs> sure he knows this, but just stay patient. The chances yeah. are going to find the back of the net very soon. And Denis, I mean, he hasn't scored in the first three matches of the season, but you can't let that mess with you mentally, Denis. The goals are coming, and when they do, the rest of the league got to watch out because Bunches. the defenses yeah. look good. Defenses look good for, for LAFC, and, of course, we throw out that RSL match in the snow, and when Denis gets cooking, I mean, watch out. Yeah, I agree. He's hitting posts. He did that a lot last year, too, although, you know, he also <laughs> scored 38 goals or whatever. You know, so they'll come. And it's probably yeah. going to be the case where over the next four games, he has like seven goals or something like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or he'll go on a three game stretch with seven goals and it'll be like, whoa, you know, and it just, that's just the way he is. Uh, but he's consistent. And uh, right now he's hitting the post. That's just all. That's yeah. the bottom line. He's getting the chances. He's putting himself in good spots. He's hitting the ball. Well, welcome to LAFC plus. This is uh, our weekly podcast here. Dave at home with you, along with uh, the great Mario Rees. And uh, if you don't know us by now from anywhere else, it's we are the voice of LAFC. I do the uh, English radio play-by-play. -play. I'm sure just about everybody knows that, who's listening to this, watching this on YouTube. But we appreciate it. Mario, of course, is the producer there. He's the co-host here with me as the co-host of LAFC+. Plus. I can't believe it's episode four, Mario. This is how the season episode goes, right? Episode four, Davey. Yeah. Episode four, Davey. You get oh, on that roll. Is it cool if I call you Davey? Is it cool if I call you Davey? I know some of your your close your family calls you that. Sometimes I call you that, Davey. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, my mother, who obviously is not with us anymore, she's the only other person in the world who calls me Davey or called me Davey. Oh. So you, oh, and, and you've and always her. done it. I love it. You, you've always so, called me that. So yeah. So now anybody who listens to the podcast or views this podcast, if you see Davey in the stadium, <laughs> say, "Hey, what's up, Davey?" And that way we know you are from the LAFC Plus podcast. How about you that? You didn't let me finish. You, you, those two people, my my mother and you, were the only two people I ever let call me Davey. So uh, that's about, <laughs> you, that's it. No, thank you. No, I don't mind. No, you're gonna get it now. Yeah, everybody gonna say what's up to that. Davey. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It's fine. But you were the only two who ever did. So it, it, this is LAFC Plus. We're happy that you're with us. Leave some comments if you uh, want to hit us up on Twitter, at Talk Soccer, at I am Mario Rees, right? That uh, yes, spelled sir. like his name. Spelled, and uh, mm -hmm. also, what's your? Uh, is it the same on Instagram for you? I keep forgetting. But Same on Instagram and okay. Twitter and TikTok, all, everything. Yep. Okay. I'm Mario only on Ruiz. Twitter with at Talk Soccer, Instagram, Dave underscore Denholm, spelled like my name, if you want to join us there. People have been commenting, Mario, about that RSL snow game. 
a lot of the comments yeah. we got on the last YouTube channel were like, hey, move on. And that's what we said. You know, I mean, is mm -hmm. it happened? It, you know, like you don't want to belabor it, but I do want to bring it back real quick to something before we break down the Sporting Kansas City game a little further. Yeah. It's the Philadelphia Union match with Seattle, right? They're in Philly. Mm -hmm. Torrential rain, horrific, terrible yeah. field conditions. They postponed the match in like the six yeah. minute. Mm -hmm. What? Where's the? Is that not the same situation? I mean, I don't understand. Everybody was like, "What well, right uh, call was it, made?" Right? Yeah. Like, look at the field well, conditions. It was terrible. They couldn't play soccer. Well, that's what we were saying just a week ago. I mean, exactly. for me. Yes, you should have postponed both of those matches. That's fine that they postponed this, the Philadelphia match. I'm not mad at that. And it's not like the Union or Seattle are to blame for that or even MLS for making that call. Fine. But you can't then say a week later, like, well, this match was bad enough that you should. Like, it makes no sense. Just no be sense consistent. At all. I mean, so that's all we're going to say on that. It's over. Again, RSL won. They deserved it. LAFC takes the loss. You move on. But it's the in. I mean, that was less than a week later. I mean, where's the consistency? That makes no <laughs> sense. It wasn't lightning, right? It wasn't because like it, they just had lightning for twelve hours straight and they had to postpone the match. They don't. They wait for lightning, right? It was the field. Right. It was the field yeah. conditions. <laughs> wow. So enough about that. And it, some of the comments were great. Like I understand those comments. Move on until you see the next week. <laughs> It was, this wasn't like in August or something where we'd forgotten the RSL match. The, the very next week. Oh, wow. I mean, it's just, that's, honestly, it's funny. And I know Steve Terundolo probably doesn't think it's funny or LAFC's players or, I get that. Like, I understand. But it is, it, it's really kind of comical in a, you know, I, I shouldn't say funny. It's laughable in a not so funny way, if that makes sense. It's like, it's not funny. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. Isn't that yeah, what they say? Funny, you don't exactly, laugh, you'll cry. It's funny, ironic. You know, it's not. It's yeah. not funny, haha, -ha, by any means. But so we'll move on. So reviewing the Sporting KC game, you heard us talk about this already. Ugo Lloris was incredible, but I'm starting to expect that from him. If I'm being mm -hmm. honest, he's looked really yeah. sharp. So oh, yeah. that's great. Get used to it. Good defensive work, no question for both teams. But there were chances, as Mario said. He, Mario's right about that. I mean, there were opportunities, Mario. But I'll say this, and I don't mean this in disparaging. I'll explain myself. I don't mean to disparage John McCarthy and um, and Maxine Crepeau in the least. Great keepers. By the way, both making some pretty big saves already through the first few weeks of yeah. MLS for their other teams who shall go nameless right now. Both playing but well. Both teams both playing, playing well. well. Yeah. I'm not taking, you know, we would, we would have lost that match on Saturday without Hugo Lloris in there. That's all I'll say. And and, I mean, and the way I mean that is, yes, the saves were good. They weren't like the toughest saves Larissa's has ever had to make. By any, This guy's had a long and storied career playing in World Cup finals. I get that. But it's just, I, I am amazed at how he makes the even tougher saves look so routine at times. So he's just at a different level. That's the way I'll put it. And we're already seeing that. Now, is he going to make mistakes along? Of course, every player, it doesn't matter who you are. I saw Lionel Messi miss a shot the other day, if you could, you know, believe that. But, uh, you know, so, yes, it happens. I mean, he's going to make, you know, mistakes. The communication's excellent immediately with Loris, right? That takes time to build. Yeah. And, and even when LAFC have had that communication, honestly, up until right now, Crepeau and McCarthy were the best goalkeepers we've ever had, in my opinion. Yes. I mean, they... Definitely. they they fixed the position and then some. So full credit to them. Without either one of those guys, we don't win a, an MLS Cup in 2022. Exactly. I mean, they deserved every bit of what they've got. And yes. But Ugo Lloris, we don't win on Saturday. Or let's say, you know, just say we, don't win. we didn't win. We lose on Saturday. One yeah, you know what's just exciting about his saves is also the way he starts the attack. His quick yes. outlet passes to Oliveira or, or Bawanga or Bogush. That's also very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. it's a huge advantage for the black and gold to get that going that quickly like that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's great stuff. That's a good way to put it, actually. So, But we move on to talk a little bit more about this match with uh, you, Mario. You talked with Iliad Sanchez right before, or after the match, I should say, on 710 ESPN, on the, uh, right after the match, before the post game show. We go down to the pitch, 
at BMO Stadium, and you had this conversation with Ilya Sanchez immediately after the nil-nil draw with Sporting KC. A team you know very well, Sporting KC. What made them so difficult tonight? Well, I think that we had our chances uh, to score. Um, it is important that uh, we didn't give up uh, a goal. And um, I think that uh, always at home you're looking for the three points. And uh, obviously, if uh, we don't uh, score our chances, it's going to be uh, difficult for us to, to get the three. Um, we tried. Uh, Kansas City is a very good team, solid uh, from many years ago, and um, I think that uh, they came here like uh, not changing their game model, and uh, that's what makes them uh, difficult to play against. Uh, but uh, still, I think we had our chances, and uh, just uh, being a little bit more clinical um, on top uh, uh, would have made the difference. I saw you speaking with the refs there as they were walking off. What was that conversation like with the refs? No, I think that. Uh, we were looking for more rhythm uh, for them and for us. I think that uh, the falls that they were calling were too soft. Uh, just uh, for them to keep improving. Uh, we, we know that uh, um, they are new to this league, but some of them. But uh, still, we are here to help. Um, and uh, for next time, uh, if they can just be let the, the game uh, develop and play and 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 uh, look more like a football game. Uh, that's uh, what we were talking here at the end. Another tough one on the road next week. You guys go to Minnesota United. What can we expect out of that one? Uh, we need to win. Uh, it's time for us to uh, win on the road. Uh, we will try to recover uh, the next 48 hours and then prepare the game as uh, we were going to play at home. Um, uh, we have to be brave. Uh, we have to keep improving in our game. and. Uh, uh, go for the win uh, in Minnesota or whatever we are playing. Thanks for the time as always, Ilya. Thank you, Mario. Yeah, so there you go. Ilya, always good with the interviews. Yeah. Always gracious uh, with his time. Uh, yeah, he had a couple of uh, interesting points there. Uh, talking about the refs a little bit there. I also had a little bit of questioning there with the stoppage time. We only had three minutes of added time at the very end of the match. And I feel like there should have been one uh, corner kick there before the final whistle. I see. Yeah, the but, LAFC, in case you're wondering, LAFC had a corner kick at the death, but the referee didn't let that go on. Like, he didn't let that take place. I completely disagree with you on that point, Mario. Okay. We don't always uh, see eye to eye on this show. That's part of the beauty of it. Uh, I didn't yep. think there would be three minutes of stoppage time. There was one substitute made in the yeah. whole game for either team. Like, LAFC made the sub. No subs for Sporting Casey, no goals, no big injuries, no real significant injury time in that sense. So I don't think uh, two teams got it on. You know, they just went at it. And it, for that, it was yeah, a good match. Did. It was crisp. It was moving. Uh, I, I, I agree with with you guys, with both you and Ilya and, and you, Mario, about, yeah, a little bit more consistency. in the re But they were consistent in a sense, the referees. Yeah. Now, Ilya didn't love it, and I can see the player's point maybe. Like they want it to be a little tougher, you know, not so many fouls, but he, he did call them for both sides that way. So, yeah, I think I, the replacement refs have done a, a decent job, a good job so far. Yeah, they're but, fine. But I getting mean, used to the style of the way that they're going to call the game is a real thing yeah, that I think teams around absolutely. MLS just have to get used to. No, you're 100% right. 100% yeah. right. It adds to the unpredictability of MLS, which is the next point I wanted to make, by the way. So, mm -hmm. LAFC won one and one. Four points, very average start. That's fine. Keep moving. You know, you just, early part of the season, you just got to keep going, keep grinding. The goals will come, and hopefully the defense continues, obviously, to play well like they did last season and so far this season, and, you know, you keep uh, building up some points. But one thing I got to say about this league overall, not just LAFC, not just the games, that people sometimes talk about, oh, it's too unpredictable or it's this. or That's the beauty of this league. It's insane, right? And at least for me, some people might not like that. Some people might want a league like the Premier League, which I don't love in that it's always the same four or five teams. And more importantly, it's really always the same two teams, like, like, you know, essentially. And yes, I know there's been, you know, and everybody points to Leicester City winning it in that magical. That's actually the exception that proves the point. Like it happened once. Okay. And 
LAFC, for, you know, MLS, LAFC, you don't know what's going to happen in this league at any moment in some of these games. Now, again, there's great teams. LAFC has been a powerhouse since they joined the league. Seattle, uh, we know the list, right? Great teams lately, even. But they don't, you don't know who's going to win this thing. You don't even know who's going to win in May, let alone in the playoffs or League's Cup or whatever comes about, right? So that's part of the strength to me. I don't want to be a league where it's Man City at the top every year. Yeah, it's really a league like no other. I mean, because yeah. all around the world, it's usually dominated by that's just true. two or three teams. That's true. And then the rest of the league has no shot at finishing at the top. Yeah, can't and just play the Premier League on that. You're right. I mean, it's it's worse in some leagues. Look at Germany. Yeah, you know, yeah. I know that you know that might be broken this year, but Bayern Munich is just has had a stranglehold on Juventus for a while there in Italy. Now that's changed a bit. That's good, but mm -hmm. it's just my preference too. Some people would yeah. prefer that the, the Yankees win every year or the Lakers. I get that. You know, I mean, certainly um, L.A. would love to see the Lakers win every year or most of L.A. But to me, that's what is an actual positive for this league. We move on to youth movement here, Mario. We would take a look at some of the LAFC players, get a little peek. And it wasn't a big week for some of the younger players because, again, only one substitute made early in the season. It was a cool night. Wasn't hard to run around for 90 minutes. I think the kickoff was somewhere like right around 59, 60 degree, perfect night to run. And so there wasn't a lot of substitutions used, but uh, David Martinez was the one of them. And uh, very lively, boy, if he would have just a, a little bit sharper, been a little, you know, and again, not blaming the kid, his second appearance, first in good weather, 18 years old. We know the story, right? But you can see that he's dripping with talent. He's absolutely oh, yeah. loaded with talent. So, I, I had a smile on my face just watching him and calling that. Yeah, maybe he should have laid it off to Denis, you know, or whatever. But that's, again, you're split seconds. That'll come. I disagree. I disagree, well, there you go. Dave. Take the shot. I got no why? problem with that. I got no problem you with that. You know why? Because I've been seeing him at training. I've been seeing him at training, and there's been opportunities where you could pass to your teammate. But he doesn't do that. He has so yeah. much confidence in his game. Even at training, he just takes the shot. And I've been hearing Ante Razov say, Good, David. Good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he is deadly with that left foot. And Ante Raza was feeding him volleys the other day, and he was just hitting some screamers. And even on that that play when he checked in, what a run! What a cheeky oh. move by the eighteen oh, yard, you know, in the God. eighteen uh, yard box there. Yeah. By David, that almost led to a game winner. Can you imagine if he would have had his first career goal, and it would have been a game winner at BMO Stadium? The place would have just. You know what I Melted. noticed? Now, the place just erupted. I wasn't busy calling the play, right? So maybe I missed a little something there. But I, I you know what I noticed? Denis is mm -hmm. so unselfish. He did not make mm -hmm. a big deal of that. He saw the kid yeah. make a move. And Denis such a scorer that he sees a move like that. And you, and mm -hmm. even in his mind, he's thinking he deserved to shoot the ball after that, right? You deserve to take the shot. If you're going to make a play mm -hmm. like that, okay, you missed. But look, and I'm not comparing these players to David Martinez. He's 18. But... Cristiano Ronaldo, Zlatan Ibrahim, they're not passing the ball. The greatest scorers of all, like, if you're going to be a scorer, and again, I'm not comparing his game to those guys by any means, but if you're going to be going after goal and you're going to be the best, you're going to shoot that ball when you make a move. Yeah, he has like that. that part of the game in his game where he yeah. knows he wants to take that shot. He's a killer. And if you notice, Dave, he was rocking the, the cornwall braids just like Ilya was yes. in game one. And they good. actually, they that uh, the stylist, the East LA stylist, uh, she did um, Ilya's braids and she did David Martinez's braids. So wow. it's kind of, a, kind of a thing. They, he is fitting into this team, though, and he's going to continue yeah. that. Another young player who played really well, I thought, was Omar Campos again. Like, Oh, yeah. Look, he had a he had a bit of a rough time in R RSL again. We don't care about that match though. He's looked very good at BMO Stadium in both matches. This guy was he held up very nicely and against the Johnny Russell here, by the way. Yes, I was going to say that. Part, what a ta right. tough task! And, and even when Russell switches up, it's Daniel Shalloway. You know, like it's like yeah. they, they got two tough wingers. So he had a very tough task, but he held up mm -hmm. very well defensively. No Solid. doubt about it. Yeah. Young players around MLS who are going to have an impact, Mario. I want to talk about one guy who we haven't mentioned, mm -hmm. although it's Inter Miami. So people, but Fernando Redondo, the guy, the young player, the former, of course, uh, Redondo, his father, uh, um, one of the best at the position ever, the number six position. 
He joins Inter Miami, takes the number 55, which is kind of cool. It's like double, you know, like the like it's like respect to his father and of course one of the greatest to play who he's playing with now, Sergio Busquets. So they wore the five, he wears 55. Here's the thing about this kid. First few matches I've seen him now. It's gonna sound weird. He hasn't looked good. Hmm. He's played pretty poorly in my estimation. And yet you see the talent like he's going to be. He's a great player. He's going to be a great player. But I've seen some, you know, it's just taking some time to get in. You know, he's getting used to it. He should have probably had a red card in the first match that he played, to be honest with you. He, 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 in my estimation, was kind of responsible for a goal in that match, giving it up earlier in the midfield play against Nashville. So I haven't seen much greatness from him by any means, but he's going to be great. You can just tell. So again, I'm not trying to pick on him. It, it takes time, you know. Like he's he's just gotten there. I don't. You can't blame him for that. Like it's it's gonna. You can see that why everybody loves his game. It's pretty easy once you really start to watch. And yet, he still can be so much better. That's the point. Like he hasn't even got rolling yet. So look out. That's uh, that's a guy I'm going to keep my eyes on. No doubt about it. Best performance from a newcomer in MLS. Which maybe we need to change the name of this. And yeah. I came up with this. I think I came up with this name. It's not exactly we could do that. rocket science here. It's the best performance for a newcomer. I'm not like breaking ground here. But what I mean <laughs> is, look, there's great performances all around. It's not like we're trying to pick out the best performance from a newcomer. It's more like just spotlighting it. So we'll probably come up with a little different name. One of the spotlighted okay. performances for a newcomer for me, Mario, was Emil Forsberg for New York Red Bull. And yes. was, it the, you know, was it the best game he's ever played? No, he's a great player. And he'll he'll have better games throughout the year. He got his first mm-hmm. goal. He he is mm-hmm. and he looks influential. And why I say that is because it's exactly what the Red Bulls have needed. I don't know why they didn't go out and get a player like this earlier. Wasted a couple of years, in my opinion. But so be it. That's what you know. Maybe they're waiting for him because <laughs> he is that mm-hmm. influential with this team. And boy, they look sharp. Now, Lewis Morgan deserves a lot of credit. He's healthy, great player. This team. And we're playing them this season. LAFC yes, will get their crack are. at the uh, New York Red Bulls. This is a tough team. This is a dangerous team because yeah. they know how to defend. They're gritty. They're tough as nails. They already had that, you know, in duplicate and triplicate and whatever. Whatever they needed, they had grit. But now they have some more talent. <laughs> and we know. Forsberg, he was all over that rainy pitch in New York over the weekend. Yeah, dangerous just with the yeah, free tough. kicks. Yep. Dangerous with the corner kicks. He took the PK with all the confidence in the world, finishing on the side netting there. Also yeah. uh, picked up the assist later on in that match. And yeah, like you said, Forsberg and the Red Bull uh, will come to BMO Stadium in mid-April. So that's Oof. a matchup to look forward to down the line. It's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be a yeah, tough one. It'll, no it'll doubt. be tough. Because it's also a team, even before Forsberg, they don't really, they're young, super young they were before Forsberg, you know. But they kind of have that chip on their shoulder like, we don't care who you are kind of thing. Now, again, mm-hmm. they weren't the most talented team, so they weren't going to win MLS Cup or, you know, they barely got in the playoffs last day. But they were scrappy, you know, like they don't – they'll punch you in the nose. They don't really care who you are. And that's not always the case for some teams. Some teams are intimidated by other, you know, good teams. Like, right, that happens. I mean, we saw it with LAFC even the first few years. There were times when teams were intimidated. And it happens to other great teams. I'm not just – picking out LAFC on that, but you could go into a place and we, you know, we kind of knew we were going to win bottom line. (laughs) Now, some of that's changed over the last few years in MLS because the the teams are just getting better. There's more talent coming in all the time, but for the Red Bulls, they didn't, they don't even care if they're not as talented as you. They'll just go punch for punch and see what happens. And now they got uh, Forsberg rocking the post. A few, he probably should already had his first goal to be honest with you, but he got his first goal. And yeah, that's a dangerous team. Speaking of other dangerous teams, not going to belabor it too much because I'm not trying to like pump toot my own horn. You know, I am the most humble man in the world. Once <laughs> again, let him cook. We told let you if cook. you let him cook, he will cook you a five course gourmet meal. And that is yes. the great chef. I'm going to start calling him the chef. Lorenzo there you go. Mancini. I like that. Yeah, he is the chef. Oh, the wonder goal he had again. It's like a broken record. You can go back to the last episode. We're saying the same. Mario, similar yeah. goal. This one's even better. 
than the little chip, which was cheeky as it was. This wonder goal in another 1-0 victory, I'll, I'll again contradict myself seemingly, but I'm not contradicting myself. I was probably the only major, like, not major, but I'm the only figure in you know, around covering whatever, talking about the league, who said Toronto was going to be good. I did. They're going to be dangerous. Yeah, you did. Look out. We, we've talked about Insigne and Toronto on every episode of LAFC Plus so far. And but here's why I'm talking player. about him on episode four. After the wonder goal, Mario, yeah, you're going to hear yeah. me and you're going to go, Denholm, what are you talking about? Toronto FC is not very good. They're not. They're not a very good soccer team right now. But I also factor that in. And even as I told you they were going to be a tough team, they were going to be a good team, a record-wise, whatever. They're not playing well. They're not. They're playing good defensively, 270 shutout minutes. They're playing great defensively. Their offense is still a mess. They're not even rolling or playing well, like, at all. It's early in the season. That can change, too. But yeah. when you have that talent, when you have game changers, they change games. This is the player that most MLS fans expected to see last season, right? Hey, Amen. It's, it's just, it is just too bad that LAFC doesn't get a chance to face Insigne and Toronto. Oh, no, it's not. In the regular that's fine season. by me. No, I'm <laughs> but fine But he's with fun that. to watch from afar, that's yeah, for sure. Exactly. That's why you yeah. uh, give MLS season pass, commercial, and it's not. They're not the – obviously, they're not sponsoring this. But that's why you watch him. You're right. Like, he's fun to watch from a distance. That's why fine. I tune into Toronto. If, I, yeah. if I'm watching season pass and I see Toronto's playing, I'm clicking in to watch well, yeah. this. And that's what, the need, that's what the league needs. Oh, that's a good bit. Most yeah. watchable teams like have a ranking. Forget the rankings, right? It's too early for that. Who cares what the rankings are? But it's most watchable. Most, yeah. you know, the team you want to follow for like mm -hmm. the neutrals, right? You're going to follow your own club, of course. And if you're a TFC fan, you're lucky because now you're finally starting to see him cook, literally. The chef is here. And we always knew he had the tower, of course. He's been great for yeah. years with Napa. I mean, at the highest levels. I mean, he's an incredible player. Finally starting to click. And it, it, full credit to John Herdman. I mean, he's doing a great job. The defense is rock solid. They're not even at their best defensively yet either. I mean, they're not they're not playing good football yet. <laughs> and yet they have seven points. And it, it, that's where we've talked about it for years. Mario and I have talked about this. If you've heard us, you know, when we do used to do another show. This is where it comes down to just grind out points in this league. Yes. And it's part of that, mm -hmm. part of that, you know, unpredictability. Just get any points you can when you can, because these games. And even more so in the playoffs, Dave. Oh, that's another level. Just grind yeah. out that win, right? You know? But yes, yeah. and yes, but even to get like this game, this coming Saturday counts just as much as decision day. But people don't see it that way, right? Because later in the year, no, get get points however, whenever you can. And Toronto's doing that. And so is another team as we go around the rest of MLS. We talked a little bit about TFC. You know who else is doing it? The rest of Canada. Oh, Canada. My yeah. home and native land, although it's not mine. I'm just – but, wow, Vancouver a big win. Not unexpected there, but, you know, they go on the road. To Montreal, again, they spend half of their year on the road, it seems, to start the year because of the weather stuff. They always seem to have this long road trip. Laurent Courtois gets another win, Mario, this time against Inter Miami, albeit, yes, I know, Messi didn't play. Suarez came off right. the bench a little bit. Boots, I get it. You know, like they didn't have their full blah, blah, blah. They got the win. And they, they ground, ground it out, and they look pretty darn good. Canada, Mario. Canada is, yes. wow, off to a blistering start here so the, our friends in the north holy cow they got to be very positive they got to be feeling good now i know they all hate each other sports wise so they're not happy about it necessarily but only for their own team but wow portland you know the team i hate the most huge comeback wow what a win in the in that rain you talked about with the red bulls earlier in the day in new york it was raining cats and dogs for the nycfc and portland match the goals in that game Wow, just go watch them. Do yourself Evander. a favor. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Mario, do yourself a favor if you're a football fan, right? And go watch those goals. Yes. Because even yes. the earlier, the Anthony goal was set up brilliantly. He's a, wow, what a firecracker he is for that team. He is playing well. And Portland should have lost that match. 
Like they had nothing going on until they started turning it on late and the NYCFC fell apart. And the thing about NYCFC is Mario, as you know, people talk about it a lot. They, they spend that, uh, that city group, part of that whole man city and many other teams, they go out and spend money. Like they've given NYCFC now, not every moment of every, like they don't get every demand they want or whatever, you know, the fans would probably tell you they want to spend more, but They've spent some money and they brought in a lot of talent and it is not working right now. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. it's early. I get it. And it's MLS. And the, uh, again, the unpredictability might be their friend right now, but because they can turn it around, they've got the talent. They better do it quickly though. I got to tell you, I wanted to talk about two teams and Mario, you're, I think you'll, you'll appreciate it. they're anti LAFC. All right. Okay. How so? Who's two this? Teams, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll explain. The two teams are anti LAFC, not because they hate LAFC. I don't mean it that way. They're the they're the opposite, right? They're the negative, uh, or the they have no winning culture whatsoever. LAFC, for whether you hate them or love them, the one thing you have to say about them is it's a winning culture from day one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know that people think that's a cliche in sports. No, it's not. It's hard to find. It's hard to hang on to if you even do have it for a short while. And it's certainly hard to have it for an extended period of time, like like LAFC has had. And other teams as in the league, certainly. Yes, but I'm comparing definitely. them to LAFC here on LAFC+. Plus. San Jose and Chicago. There is just... They are allergic, it seems, to winning. What, I mean... I'll say it as well. Like they've spent money, San Jose less certainly. Chicago has sold players for big money, but then they went out and spent it, right? They they haven't hoarded that money like they could have theoretically. You know, like you can, you don't have to spend money in sports. Like you, you know, so yes, I know there's some salary restrict like floors. Yes, but you know what I'm saying. You don't have to go spend the John Duran money that you got for that huge transfer. They went out and did it. But boy, it is hard to develop that winning culture if you don't have it. And, Dave, and I'm not San saying, Jose and Chicago are huge football markets yes. too. The potential and they're trying, there in those they're markets. trying. Both those teams are trying. That's what I'm, my point is. Yeah. It is hard to come by if you either lose it or don't have it. If you're trying to build that, it is not easy. It's and again, not again it's not easy in this league culture. either. Oh no. man. And they are just I mean, struggling. on the pitch or even in the stands in the stadium. Now, LAFC have made it look super easy, like you were saying, but it takes a lot of people in certain certain positions to to know what they are doing and do it well from from the GM to the yeah. coaching staff to the trainer to the players, even the supporters need to need to step up and, and hold the players accountable, you know, if they're not performing well make sure Sure. that they feel the love make sure that they feel the support and when they're not playing well also let them know as well but it's definitely hard to build a good football culture no matter what before people you know there's gonna be a lot of people that would listen to this and even if you want to comment fine leave it on the youtube page or you know hit us up on social media san jose has punched us in the nose a few times of course we play them twice right i mean they they have talent they're tough Mm -hmm. to play with uh, against at times no doubt it's not about that. Chicago has talent. They went out and spent money. Jerdon Shakiri still is influential for a very good Switzerland national team. They're not to be messed with. And when he plays with Switzerland, he's not to be messed with. The guy can play. But it just it's just not working. Like what how is it because again, I'm not trying to pick on them. I want to hear from fans of those clubs. What is it? Because it hasn't clicked. They have both teams have more talent than they're certainly providing in terms of the wins, losses, draws. They just do. They have more talent than they're. And I know they're not the most talented teams. I'm not trying to say they should be winning supporter shield yet, you know, and going out and winning the cup. But I mean, wow. And this is not just the first three weeks kind of. No, right. We all know this. This is not just me picking on them. For 2024, this is systemic. And this is, a, you know, I do know San Jose, of course, has had their success in MLS. So has Chicago. 
I get it, but that seems like a long, long, long time ago because it was. And especially in sports, right? Every year is like seven years. In sport. I mean, it's like dog years. So, wow. That just struck me that it is not easy to come by that winning culture. And we should be grateful as LAFC fans and, you know, building this club. Like, from day one, <laughs> they've had the winning culture. And it's just, that is not, I don't take that for granted. That's the lesson. Because you shouldn't. So Saturday, Mario, what's coming up? We got another big one. We got to win this one. Go on the road. Get our yeah, first win on the road. Another, Let's go. It's another tough road match here for LAFC. Heading to Minnesota United. Minnesota United was in a wild one uh, this weekend. Now, they did give up a goal against Orlando City just 15 seconds into the match. Oh, I know. But then Sheesh. the loon struck back right away <laughs> with the goal in the fourth minute. Orlando and did. They did yeah, pick Orlando. Up Orlando yeah, got off pick to a up hot the three start. points. Yeah, mm -hmm. Orlando's tough. I mean, and yet they're struggling. I think it's the CCL. We'll talk more about that maybe next episode too. A lot of teams in CCL. Yeah. We know that it's tough when you're trying to balance that. We saw it with Inter Miami, you know, trying to maybe rest some play. We saw Nashville rest 10 players against the, the Galaxy from their starting lineup at least. Got the 2-2 two -two draw. So, yeah, good luck to all the CCL teams too. It's going to be interesting mm -hmm. this week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday matches. We'll talk maybe more about that as the tournament progresses too. But yeah, it is going to be a tricky one, Mario. What time we? Uh, when's the uh, pregame again? Sorry, we get going at five p.m. with the pregame on the ESPN LA app, and then uh, kick off shortly after five thirty. Uh, five thirty also on the Apple TV MLS season pass. So it's going to be a good one. Minnesota is going to be riding high off of that win. Uh, so they'll be bringing it here for for the match against LAFC and the players to look out for, Dave. Uh, Langwane, you know, he had the game winner. And then Puki. Puki's the man from Finland, had the brace against Orlando over the weekend. And, uh, you know, he likes to call the Puki party. So hopefully there's no <laughs> Puki party, as he likes to call it, on a Saturday night in Minnesota. Yeah, let's ruin that party. And they haven't even had yeah. Reynoso yet, one of the most talented players in the history oh, of he's MLS. So talented. Yeah. <laughs> and they haven't even used, you know, he hasn't even been around with them. So, yeah, tough task, no doubt. Mario, episode four. Holy cow, in the books. Can you believe it? In the books. Yeah, yeah. it's going good, Let's, man. We're having a blast. Loving it. Absolutely. We will talk to you next week. Uh, we keep looking forward to it. Hit us up on social media. Let us know what you think, good or bad. We know you love the show. We appreciate it. This is LFC Plus. He's Mario Ruiz. I'm Dave Home. Thank you for joining us.